you can see this massive patch of wallpaper on my wall. No, you can't. Hi, Benny. I thought you were going to stay there for the video, but alas, of course you're not. Well, I set up this whole camera <laughs> so you can see the cat in the background. You should never trust a cat. I don't know why I even... This is silly. It was silly to think I could. Hello, bibliophiles. My name is Jill. I have an iced coffee, so you hear that rattling. That's what it is. Just a few days ago, I got back from a 17-day road trip where me and two of my friends drove from Houston, Texas, all the way to Montreal. We mapped out our journey of something like 2,500 miles, 4,700 kilometers. Uh, it was exhausting and it was amazing. A once in a lifetime opportunity. I had such an amazing time. I was so tired at the end of it, but it was incredible to see parts of the states that I have never seen before, might never see again. Um, we went through, oh my gosh, how many states? Something like 16, 17 states. Mississippi, Louisiana, North Carolina, Georgia. I'm missing some <laughs> in the South for sure. Um, yeah, so it was just an incredible experience. While we were planning this trip, I said to my friends, I'd like to go to at least one, if not more independent bookstores in every city that we stop in and stay overnight in. Obviously, I love bookstores, I love book shopping, and as we all know, book shopping and book reading are two different hobbies. <laughs> we were able to do that for the most part. There was a couple cities we didn't get to, which I'll explain in a minute. But honestly, these visits to these bookstores were some of the highlights of the whole trip. Talking to booksellers across, you know, this whole continent. You know, people who work in bookstores are kindred spirits. People who love talk about books you know, there's a connection there instantaneously. In many cases, the people in the bookstores were able to tell us the history of the place, um, of the bookstore itself, or, you know, the town, the city. Um, they were able to give us some recommendations of places to go and things to do. And it was just such a wonderful part of this whole experience. And I'm so grateful I was able to meet so many wonderful people from across the states who feel like kindred spirits. It was just really, really wonderful. Before I went on this trip, my plan was to pick up the Booker Longlisted Books while on this trip because the Booker Longlist was announced kind of like very early days while I was on this trip. And I didn't do that at all. I didn't buy a single Booker book. Partially it's because a lot of the books are not published in North America yet. Some of them are, but quite honestly, the ones I was interested in that were published, um, I'm thinking primarily of Paul Harding's, uh, it's called This Other Eden. That American cover is so hideous. I was like, I am not buying this book. <laughs> so I didn't do that at all. Instead, what I decided to do, and this is probably, again, something that I am going to cherish for a very, very long time. At each bookstore I went to, I talked to the bookseller and I asked them to recommend me a book that they recommend to lots of people or something that they recently really, really loved. Um, and I asked them to write their name on it, the date, and the bookstore where I got it from. And I'm going to use those as souvenirs to, you know, remember the people I spoke with and also the trip itself. And I also can't wait to read these books that the booksellers recommended because every single one of these booksellers like completely sold me on the book they're talking about. They all spoke so passionately about these books and there's nothing that makes me more interested in a person or what a person's talking about than seeing them be passionate about it, be excited about it, and totally sell me on something. So the books that I have bought from them are the ones I'm most excited to read and I'm going to show you them now. The first city, of course, was Houston, and the first bookstore I went to was one that many people recommended to me in my comments, so thank you so much for your recommendations. It was Brazos Bookstore, and I spoke with Susan there, and Susan, Susan, if you watch this video, it was such a highlight of my trip to speak with you. She was just so enthusiastic. She was just so eager to share the things that she loved, the books that she loved, and we had an amazing conversation and people from the store kind of joined in and it was like just a really wonderful way to kind of start this whole bookstore adventure. So Susan, thank you so much. And this is really where from the get go, I knew this was going to be a really interesting experiment to ask these booksellers about things. Hi, Benny. Um, because Susan <laughs> sold me on Demon Copperhead and I was 0% going to read this book. And I think if it had been like long as for the booker, I might have picked it up, but I just hadn't really been drawn in from anyone's reviews on booktube, anything I've seen online, nothing really sold me on this. Even when I won the Pulitzer alongside Trust, a book that I absolutely loved, I still like wasn't really drawn into this. But the way that Susan talked about this book and the way that she talked about how it represented America right now, the kind of current crises it's going through, she totally sold me. And it made me think a lot about um, Empire of Pain and about the Sackler stuff that's, you know, the show Painkiller and what's the other show that's on uh, Dope Sick that's on Disney Plus. Anyways, the way she talked about all of that, and I had just watched a video about Appalachia, Appalachia, and anyway, she <laughs> completely sold me on it. So Susan's the magician, and I can't wait to report back to you once I read this because 
Now I'm far more curious than I ever was about this book. The next bookstore we went to was called Murder by the Book, which is just across the street from Brazos Bookstore and honestly great city planning because it makes for a really easy book crawl. I didn't actually buy any books at that store because it's very much a mystery thriller bookstore. My friend brought a couple of books and she seems really excited about them and they also sold used books and new books which I really appreciate when a bookstore does that. I looked for some used copies of Agatha Christie there. Um, one thing I like about my Agatha Christie collection is I want it to kind of look like it's been collected from all different places, uh, you know, different editions and different places in the world and they just didn't have anything there that wasn't like the standard editions I can buy here. I didn't buy any books there, but I did buy this mug, which is, it says on one side, Murder by the Book, um, the bookstore itself, which is really cute. But then the other side says Holmes and Watson and Marple and Poirot. And you know I love Marple and Poirot, obviously, but um, you might know that I'm a big fan of Holmes and Watson as well. I actually haven't read a lot of Sherlock Holmes books. I did read The F Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. I mostly just love the show. It probably isn't surprising that I was a massive uh, Sherlock fan, uh, and I did some work on it in my master's. I loved it. <laughs> I still do love it. It's also an enormous mug and I am kind of morally opposed to small mugs. I think you should only have coffee in enormous amounts. So I'm really happy with this mug as well. The next city we went to was New Orleans and again another highlight. I mean <laughs> there are so many highlights of the trip. It was just an amazing trip but New Orleans is an incredible city. I can't wait to go back. We were only there for you know, less than 72 hours and we had such a great time in those. We packed so much into those, you know, two and a half days that we were there. Um, I can't wait to go back. But the bookstore we ended up going to there was called Faulkner House Books. I think Faulkner House Books is my favorite bookstore of the whole trip. That feels like a big thing to say, but I just fell so deeply in love with the bookstore as soon as we walked in. It's like next to Pirate Alley, which is <laughs> just like the coolest name for a street. And the bookstore itself is actually only one very small room and it's the room where William Faulkner wrote his first novel and part of his second novel. And the bookseller there was named Peter and he knew so much about William Faulkner as I think you probably would have to if you worked in that store um, but he also knew a lot about New Orleans and he gave us a lot of recommendations and told us about the history and he had all kinds of interesting things to say and he talked to us for such a long time and he was so willing to just answer questions and kind of tell us all he knew and it was just wonderful. And the selection in such a small bookstore is very, very tiny. It, the curation was immaculate, like such beautiful books, beautifully arranged, wonderfully curated, just exceptional bookstore. I loved it. And I can't wait to go back to that bookstore, but also New Orleans. So I bought three books from that bookstore. The one that he recommended to me specifically was this one by Nancy Mitford. There's actually, there's actually two novels. This is The Pursuit of Love and Love in a Cold Climate um, together in one bind up. Nancy Mitford, he said, was writing during the Second World War, just after Second World War. And he said, this is kind of funny and it's a love story, but it's also like, um, a cultural commentary. So it says, the pursuit of love follows the travails, travails? What is that word? <laughs> of Linda, the most beautiful and wayward radlet daughter who falls first for a stuffy Tory politician, then for an ardent communist, and finally for a French duke who joins the Renaissance. Then it says the second book, Love in a Cold Climate, focuses on Polly Hampton, long groomed for the perfect marriage by her fearsome mother, Lady Montdor but secretly determined to find her own path. Together, these hilarious novels vividly evoke the lost glamour of aristocratic life in England between the world wars. And he signed it and it's just so wonderful. I can't wait to read this. I have heard of Nancy Mitford before, but this is one I would never have picked up on my own. And I think I'm gonna really enjoy it. So I'm very, very grateful that he recommended that one to me. I picked up two of the books while I was there. I first picked up a Faulkner book because I've never read William Faulkner. And I figured when else to buy his books than when at his namesake bookstore. So I picked up this one, which is called New Orleans Sketches. I didn't get the one that was the one that he wrote there. I can't remember what it's called because it just didn't sound interesting to me. But this is a collection of, um, I thought that Peter said that they were written like for the newspaper and I thought they were essays, but I think they're actually short, short stories or kind of like, sketches, um, fictional sketches, and apparently some of these were then kind of incorporated into the future novels that he wrote. Um, so I figured this was a good way to kind of remember New Orleans and also maybe read Faulkner for the first time. And the last book I got was one I literally had picked up in a different bookstore in my city like months ago, but then I dropped it and I bent the cover and I didn't want to buy it anymore because <laughs> I didn't want to buy a bent cover book. I'm very sorry to that bookstore. I will not say them on camera. Anyway, um, I saw it there and then also Sean announced it was part of his book club so I figured I'd pick it up. This is Upstream by Mary Oliver. This is her essays. I've wanted to read more Mary Oliver. She is a booktube darling but also just a darling of 
you know, literature generally. So I'm very glad to have this. I was going to try to pick this up before the end of the month, you know, for the book club and uh, it's not going to happen because I have all these books that are unread here. I have books I'm reading right now. <laughs> and this is just not going to be prioritized, but I will read it eventually. I'm excited to read it. I almost forgot. I did also get um, a tote bag from Faulkner House Books. I just couldn't stop spending money there. <laughs> I was so happy. I loved it there. Um, this is the tote bag. Uh, it's full of sand because I brought it to the beach with me when I was in Georgia. Um, and it says, says Faulkner House Books on it. And it's very cute. It's a kind of a weird size tote bag. But I, I, I'm a tote bag girly. I have lots of tote bags. I use them all the time. I absolutely love them. And this is what the house looks like on the outside. And it's incredible. So happy to have that as well. We did go on a plantation tour, a place called the Whitney Plantation. Um, this was something that Peter recommended to us. It's a plantation tour. It's the first one. And maybe the only, but don't quote me on that, but certainly the first one that focuses on the lives of the enslaved people. And so we went on that tour. We had an amazing tour guide and I can't remember her name, but she was so knowledgeable. We learned so much. It was pretty grim, but also pretty incredible to see, you know, the type of the land where these people lived and um, just to kind of get up close and personal look at the cabins where they lived and the kind of work they did. It was really impactful and it was also a very hot day. <laughs> also, we're ludicrous to go to the South in August for like drive across the South. I mean, that is psychotic behavior. Um, but gratefully at the plantation, they did have like on the walkway, a little like um, kind of misting machines, which sounds so simple, but it was like life-saving. So grateful for that the plantation and also for the incredible tour. It was just a really um, great experience to, give that first-hand uh, exposure to that kind of history. Of course, they had like a little library slash bookstore gift shop area when you left. And after the tour, I picked up this book, Zora Neale Hurston's book, Every Tongue Got to Confess, Negro Folk Tales from the Gulf States. I felt like this was a really good companion for, um, we had done a um, also like a boat tour earlier in the day, which wasn't necessarily focused on the experience of enslaved people in the South, but they all kind of seem a little bit connected. And it's hard to kind of avoid that kind of history when you're, I guess maybe you could avoid it if you really wanted to. We didn't want to. Um, so this was, a, I think it's gonna be really interesting to read. I wanted to get a piece of uh, fiction or like kind of stories because I've read a lot of, I've read a lot about uh, slavery in the South. And so this one to me is like um, stories told from the people who were enslaved. And I think that this might be something I haven't read before. And I'm really excited to read this one. And also I've never read Zora Neale Hurston. That's a massive gap in my reading and I really want to read her. So I feel like this was a great purchase and I'm looking forward to getting to this as well. The next bookstore we went to was in Savannah, Georgia. And I loved Savannah. I want to go back. It is just unlike anywhere else I've ever experienced it is just lush and quiet and serene but also like so infused with history and we were only there for such a short period of time and we went to the beach for half the day which was also amazing i have never swum swam swum in the ocean before uh that's not true um i mean i grew up on newfoundland next to the atlantic ocean and i've been in the ocean but you can't swim in it because it is freezing in newfoundland <laughs> but it was like wild to me to be in georgia and swimming in the atlantic ocean and it was like bath water it was Incredible, we had such a wonderful time, got a crazy bad sunburn, um, but we did apply sunscreen. <laughs> anyway, we went to the bookstore, E. Shaver's Booksellers, and this had been recommended to me as well. And another bookstore I just loved, they had cats in the bookstore. I didn't actually see the cats. I saw, you know, notions of the cats, but they were during the dinner time when we got there, so we couldn't see the cats. But um, you could get like pictures of the cats. <laughs> they sold like cat merchandise there. So obviously I got some stickers with some cats on it. I went in there intentionally to buy this book, which is Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil by John Berent, 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 Berent. This was recommended to me by a couple different people. And I'm so glad it was because I've started reading it already. And also this is um, Georgia peach juice. <laughs> that has already tainted this book. Um, there's, you know, I've been p carrying it around in my bag on this trip and so it's gotten a bit beat up in the journey, but I've been really enjoying it. Um, it's two books kind of in one. The first half, and this is what somebody at a bar told me, <laughs> the first half is about uh, like a bunch of different characters who live in Savannah and the second half is about like murder mystery and then how these characters from the first half kind of all play in to this mystery. The writing is really, really good. And having been there and like, I mean, I was only there for again, a very short period of time, but like even having a rough idea about what it looks like when they describe the squares or when they name certain streets or like describe the houses. I'm like, yeah, I can, I literally was just there, I can picture it. It's just very effective. I'm really enjoying reading it and I'm hoping to finish it this weekend. And I will say to the man who 
talked to me at the bar while I was reading this book and I was incredibly rude too because he was an interrupt my reading. Um, I'm very sorry. That was very rude and you were very hot and I'm, so <laughs> I'm really sorry. The book I had recommended to me from the bookseller there, her name was Jenny. I think she was the assistant manager or the manager there. We had a wonderful talk. She was so willing to share her favorite books and like just was really descriptive in describing the books that she really liked and would recommend. She recommended me first kind of like a like a romance contemporary book which I was she you know convinced me that it was like oh I should try this but then she recommended this one and I was like this sounds much more up my alley than the other one. This is called Natural Beauty by Ling Ling Huang and she said so they read it for their book club. It's about um, a piano player who's like very very talented um, but her parents get into an accident she has to leave the job and she ends up going to work in this like high-end beauty wellness shop in New York City and I think what she was describing about this book was kind of that it was basically she kind of gets sucked into this culture and like things start happening to her she said there's a little bit of body horror in here but she's not graphic and I'm not a body horror fan this sounds like it could be a bit like spooky ooky but I told her I really like Siaka Miranda's book uh, her short story collection called life ceremony and that had some like body horror stuff in there and it was a bit like grotesque and she said that this is kind of along the same lines it's a kind of story that i'm not sure i would have been immediately drawn to but again she was so passionate about this book and and so they had such a good discussion about their book club and she just really it really affected her and like stuck with her and i thought you know what this is it this is why we talk to books this is why booksellers matter this is why independent booksellers matter because they recommend things that you would never have otherwise given a second thought and I'm very excited to read this one. So thank you so much Jenny for this recommendation. The next city we stopped in overnight was Charlotte, North Carolina, but for a lot of reasons, weather, uh, timing, problems with the car, we ended up not being able to go to a bookstore while we were there. Um, so I didn't get anything there. <laughs> so uh, that's too bad, but maybe I'll go again someday. Um, but the next place we stopped was Washington DC and I did not expect to love Washington, but I loved Washington. It is such a beautiful city. We were driving through it and we're like, this is stunning. Like, you you know, obviously in movies, you just kind of see the monuments and you see kind of the Capitol and like the White House and like the places that obviously are important to like American democracy. I don't, I don't know why I did this. Um, <laughs> but we drove through kind of like up through the places where people would live, residential areas. And we went to Politics and Prose, which is the bookstore that I was most excited to go to on this whole trip. And I also loved it there. Um, but yeah, Washington is stunning, so beautiful. I would return, which I never thought I would say that, but I would happily go back to Washington uh, someday and just kind of spend a couple of days there just because it's so pretty. And because I feel like Washington is the bookstore capital of the United States. Before the trip, I was looking for bookstores to go to. I knew I had to go to politics and prose. It just felt like, you know, a must go to. But also to pick any other bookstores was like impossible. There was just so many. Um, so I have to go back and do like a full bookstore tour of just Washington. From Politics and Prose, I bought three books. And again, I walked into Politics and Prose and I knew I was gonna like it, but I walked in and something about like that feeling you get where you're like, I can't wait to come back here. Like before you even like, you know, you're just one foot in the door and you're like, this is a place I love. This is a place that could be my home store. I just felt like, oh, kindred spirits live here. So at Politics and Prose, I spoke with Sarah and I asked her for a nonfiction book specifically. And she said, how do you feel about memoirs? And I said, I love memoirs. So she recommended this book to me, Salido by Javier Zamora. And I've heard other people on booktube talk about this book. So when she recommended it, I was like very happy to pick it up because it's a book I had had on my radar and I was excited to have a reason to give it a try. The back says, a young poet tells the inspiring story of his migration from El Salvador to the United States at the age of nine in this gripping tale of bravery, perseverance, and seeking one's family. And she said, because it, you know, she has a dark kind of book, it's kind of grim, but she said, because it's told from the perspective of a child, um, there is like some lighter moments in here. So I'm excited to read this as well. I think this is a book I will really enjoy. I also got my hands on a copy of The Book of Goose by Yi Yun Lee while I was there. It's the first time I saw it in paperback and I have wanted it. If you watched my like wish list video a while back, this is one that was on the list and it was in paperback. And I thought, why not? It was right on the front table. First thing when I came in, I was like, whoop. This one is coming home with me. And then I found a book of short stories as I was perusing the shelves. Um, again, amazingly curated, but also quite a large selection of books. So lots of stuff I'd heard of, lots of stuff I didn't hear of. I picked up this short story collection called Innards by, that's the author's name. I will show it to you in print. Um, I'm not gonna try to pronounce it because I know I will pronounce mispronounce it and I don't wanna do that. But this is the author's name. 
this cover is unbelievably striking. I just thought it was like just creepy enough um, to like really draw me in. And it says here, set in Soweto, the urban heartbeat of South Africa, Innards tells the intimate stories of everyday black folks processing the savagery of apartheid with grit, wit, and their own distinctive bewildering humor. Um, I'd never heard of it. This looked so eye-catching. I was really thrilled about this one just because I felt like something totally new and I'd never heard of before. So I'm excited about this one as well. The second bookstore we made it to in Washington DC was called, oh my gosh, what is it called? I can never remember what it was called. Bus Boys and Poets. And it's a bookstore slash bar slash comedy club. When we got there, it was right before closing time. And I was like, I gotta, we gotta get in. And my friend wanted to go in and see the bar and stuff. So we went in and we just kind of explored a little bit before they closed. And there was like attached to the side room, there was this like small performance area. And there was a woman doing stand up. And I would love to go back and just kind of spend time in that. It's like such a cool space. It was just a cool, cool space. Cool, cool people. Did not expect Washington to be as cool <laughs> as it was. Um. Anyway, at that bookstore, I picked up a book of poetry. I figured Bus Boys and Poets, A Time for Poetry. I got um, God Themselves by Jane Nichelle. This says, in her stunning debut, poet Jane Nichelle taps into her experiences of growing up as a queer black woman in the American South as she courageously confronts the effects of forced religion and learns to center the body, something she was always told to hide. Um, I think this cover is great. I think that like, just like it's a cute little trim size. And the funny thing about this book store is I asked the um, woman who was working on the cash to recommend a book to me and she said, I don't read. <laughs> and she's like, I actually just work on the bar. The bookseller went home like half an hour ago. I'm just here to man, you know, the counter. And I said, okay, well, I'm going to buy this book. Can you write in it um, where it's from and your name, even though you didn't recommend it? <laughs> and uh, we had a good laugh about that and she was game. And so I appreciate that. So thank you, Nelly, for just being a lovely person to chat with and for signing <laughs> this book. The last two bookstores were in New York City and I'm wearing this Back to the Future shirt, The Musical, because we saw Back to the Future, The Musical in New York City. And one, I just love the shirt, I think it's awesome. But also The Musical was awesome. And we got the last two tickets for like that night that we're trying to get the tickets for. And we almost didn't get them and we ended up rushing in like right before the show started and it was like really dramatic. And the show was super fun. I mean, is it the best musical ever? No, but is it a great night out? Yes. There's a flying car, like the level of the acting and the like just the physicality of the show is like so intense. It was just awesome. So I'm wearing this shirt because I had a great time. We also saw Sweeney Todd with Josh Groban and I have a deep long-standing affection for Josh Groban. I love him very much. And I've seen him live a couple of times and I just think he's incredible. And of course he was incredible in the show, but the woman who played Mrs. Lovett, um, Annalee Ashford, is that her name? I'll link it down below. She really sold the show. She was so funny and she really had like, you know, the bulk of the work to do, I feel like. Anyway, it was such a good show. We had a great time there, although we had like the worst seats in the house and we were, you know, I'm a big person. <laughs> My friend is like not short and we were jammed in these tiny little <laughs> seats. Our knees were all like crunched up and it was, you know, physically uncomfortable, but a really amazing show. We're so glad we went. And we also saw Hades Town, and all three of us agreed that we were very confused for the first 45 minutes of that show. We didn't know what was going on. And then the song Wait For Me came on and we're like, yep, I love this musical. <laughs> so um, just overall, had a great time on Broadway, had a great time in New York. Uh, I was pretty tired because it was the end of, you know, coming toward the end of our road trip. And New York is a city that requires a lot of energy. So we, you know, we put the miles in, we trekked out to Brooklyn because I wanted to go to Books Are Magic. We of course got some pictures by the Books Are Magic wall and we explored Brooklyn a little bit. Um, and then we went into the store and I loved it. Again, so wonderfully curated, like just, I don't, I'm, I want to be a bookseller. <laughs> I want to curate books. I am so impressed when bookstores are so smartly curated. Like it just, there's a level of care and a level of like craftiness and like creativity that goes into that. Anyway, another amazingly curated bookstore. Really loved everything there. Um, the book I picked up on my own was Elsewhere by Alexis Shaitkin. This was one I think that Sarah from Freshly Read Books read and enjoyed. She really liked this one. Um, it's a book that I was like a little bit interested in. I, had, I think I had tagged it as like a want to read on Goodreads, but I saw this soft cover and like the hardcover, I'll put a picture of it here, is like super saturated. And this is like kind of like a faded um, print. I think it's so impactful and like it's really beautiful. 
Also, I just realized there's a face here. <laughs> Sometimes when you look at the covers of a book in a camera, it's very different than looking at them front on. I mean, there's a face, there's a body. Didn't know that until right now. Um, <laughs> anyway, I saw it there and I thought, you have to come home with me. And then the other book that I picked up on my own, just at the cash, because I just like couldn't leave it there, was a little book called Cat Poems. It's just a collection of poems by, you know, random people. Emily Dickinson, um, Fernando Pessoa, Franz Kafka, like, little short poems about cats and I figured you know I'm gonna read them to Benny before bed <laughs> and at the bookstore I spoke with Zoe and I appreciate her time because it was they were pretty busy and she gave me like a lot of attention and I really appreciate that she was thoughtful and you know answer my questions and like had a chat with me I really appreciate that again booksellers are the best people <laughs> on the planet she recommended this book to me Happy Hour by Marlo Grenados and she asked if I heard of it and I said no um, but I have heard of it. The cover's just different in Canada. I just didn't recognize this title. And this cover is significantly better <laughs> than the one in Canada. And I remember that Uncarly, I think, loved this book. So it's a story about two friends living in New York City. And I think it's about like, just like coming of age, you know, learning how to be friends, learning how to care about your family, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. It just felt like the right fit. And she said she wanted to recommend a book to me set in New York. So that was awesome. I can't wait to get to this one either. And she wrote me the loveliest message. Jill, thanks for visiting us. Happy travels and happy reading. How lovely is that? I mean, booksellers, again, just kindred spirits. I also got tote bag from them. Um, <laughs> books are magic. This one got, <laughs> this got a bit rained on um, because the day we were in Brooklyn, it was pouring rain. Um, I was soaked by the time I went to the Strand, which is the ne the last bookstore I went to, and uh, this book bag carried everything in it, and so we're grateful for its a contribution to the trip. And yeah, so the last book I went to was the Strand, and I'll be honest, at this point, I was soaking wet. We had been trekking around for days. I was exhausted, and it was pouring rain, torrential downpour, and <laughs> we were pretty far from the hotel, and. I got there and also, you know, we had been traveling for, you know, close to two weeks at this point and I was um, a little bit bookstored out, I'll be honest with you. I was, you know, just very tired. And The Strand, uh, which I had never been to until this time, um, if you've never been, it's enormous. There's three floors, they're huge. I think it's on like 18 miles of books is like what they're, they're saying is. Um, it's very busy, it was packed also because it was raining so everyone was inside. And it was just a really busy store. They have new and used books. It's, a beautifully laid out store. I really liked the feeling of being in the Strand, but there's just no way you can see the Strand in like less than two or three hours. Like you just can't do a proper, you know, it, it feels like Powell's books to me, like where you just need like half a day to just fully explore the shelves there. And also because it was so busy in there and there's, you know, a lot of staff working, but I didn't really have the same uh, feeling like I could ask a staff. I mean, I could have. We asked, we talked to some staff members first. My friend was asking some questions. They were perfectly lovely and whatever, but I just didn't have the same vibes as the other bookstores I had gone to. And plus I was like cranky <laughs> because I was so cold and wet. We were there for quite a while and there was nothing that I was really like feeling really strongly about getting. I knew I wasn't gonna ask for a recommendation at this bookstore, but then I saw this book near the front the Girl Who Wrote Loneliness by Kyung Chuk Shin, translated from, I think it's the Korean, by Ha Yun Jung. So I decided to pick this up and I would say it's a recommendation from Matthew Sharapa because he talks about this book all the time. Um, I've always been a little bit intrigued to read it the way he talks about it. And I think about The Strand, I think about Matthew Sharapa. So I figured, you know what? This is a roundabout recommendation. I still feel like I got a book recommendation for someone who knows books really well and also in a place that he is often found. <laughs> so I feel great about this recommendation and I was really happy to see this. So this kind of like, this felt right. It clicked. It's like, okay, this is the right book to buy from The Strand. So those are all the books that I got on this road trip across the US. We did also go to Boston and spend a day in Boston and I was going to go to Brattle Books, that kind of used bookstore, but the timing didn't really work out and we ended up going to a baseball game, which took a lot of time like to get out there and get back. And honestly, the baseball game was like one of the highlights of this whole trip. I had such an amazing time. I have never watched baseball in my life, except for like, you know, Angels in the Outfield. And I decided that baseball is my personality now. I loved the baseball game. I feel like every time I go to the States now I, and I'm at a city that has a baseball team, I will look for a baseball game because we just all had such a good time. If you have read any of these books, let me know in the comments down below. I would love to know what you think of them. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys soon. Bye.